Right guys, this is a long plane review for Brax Bluff on the Amstrad CPC, released by Amsoft in 1985. So yes, this is a very early Amstrad game and not particularly well known. Indeed, I'd never played of it, let alone heard of it until early this year when we did an A to Z of Amsoft Games Amstream. That's my weekly Amstrad live stream on Friday evenings. And then recently someone requested the game again and I was quite taken aback by it and played quite a lot of it. Uh, initial impressions were this is quite impressive for an Amsoft game and maybe an undiscovered gem. There are several different gameplay types over a few levels which is also quite unusual for an Amsoft game because usually most Amsoft games are ripping off an arcade game or another existing game from the Speccy or C64. Indeed actually after digging around it looks like this is a port of a ZX Spectrum game released a year previous of the same name so isn't an Amstrad exclusive sadly. And there you go, Micro Mega on the uh, loading screen there. We'll talk more about them in a minute. And this would have cost $8.95 on cassette back in the day. And essentially, we are on a rescue mission on an alien planet. The planet in question, I believe, is called Brax Bluff. Three members of a planet exploration team are stuck with their life support failing. So we have to land, find a vehicle, use that vehicle to find the stranded team members, uh, and then we have to transport them across various landscapes and across the sea to a base ship waiting in safety with all of them still alive and become the hero of the day. I'll read out the full story in a bit because we're going to kick things off here. And look, nice presentation here as we're leaving our uh, lander ship here and descending onto the planet of Brax Bluff. Now, um, what we have to do on this level. Um, as we're skimming the atmosphere, any control to start there? There we go. Right, we need to follow the uh, instrument landing system radio beacon. So we're actually moving that dot in that circle in the middle of the screen there. And we need to keep it as centre as possible. And if we score above 8.0, you can see the score there in the bottom left corner. There you go. Done it already. Um... It, then then uh, if when it's time to land as long as your score is over eight you'll have completed this uh, level but not before firing your retros when it tells you to which is just simply press and hold the fire button and then we land it says proceed on foot towards sound so now we're on foot and we need to follow the homing beacon uh, which is emitting a noise and if you're on the right course, you will hear higher pitched beeps. Again, keep an eye on the score. If you hit 20.0, so the game will spawn the rover, basically. Uh, but also you have to shoot the alien creatures, which are trying to drain your energy. Fairly simple level. Just avoid the rocks in the way. Move left and right and then move forward. So now we've got a shoot up type level, which is awesome. And the beeps are getting higher pitch, and we know we're on the right track here. Quite a short level, this one. Not quite there yet. Score's not going up, so I'm not quite in the right direction, so I'm just shifting left and right here until I find the right way. <laughs> Might take a little do it. There we go, we're on the right track now. And we found the rover. And essentially, um, the three crew members are stuck in this rover. We've brought energy so we can power the rover vehicle. Uh, it says the three crewmen are on life support and got across the marsh here. Right, so we're now in the vehicle driving level. So, um,. And we have the three crew members inside the vehicle. Their life and vital signs are the three waves to the bottom right uh, above your speed. Uh, they're constantly weakening and take too long and they'll die. So you need to keep in the top speed of five in the vehicle. You can control your speed by using up and down. Ooh, nearly, nearly missed him there. Uh, but basically don't, uh, don't crash into the sides. Um, you'll hear a noise if you're crashing inside sides, sides like that there. That yeah, right on the edge there. Oof. 
Um, and shoot the aliens, which are looking to drain energy from uh, the rover vehicle. They'll try and land on the roof, and they will do so if they reach the top of the plane area and the screen. And um, and they will then drain your power, which is shown on the left there above the skull. Got a power of 30. And we've got across the marsh, uh, the ruined city, and then the desert. Uh, the marsh has one creature attacking you. When we get to the ruined city, we'll have two aliens um, attacking us. And then finally on the des desert, we can have up to three aliens attacking us at any one time. But this is actually quite a fun little level because you, uh, you, you've got a target system which you can fight independently of moving your vehicle by holding down the fire button. Uh, release the fire button, then you're back in control of the rover vehicle. So you've got to be constantly thinking about your position in the road, if you want to call it that, and also shooting the aliens as they come down. There we go, we're now in the ruined city. So you reach the ruined city when your score is at 30.0, and at the end of this level, uh, if, we reach a, if we reach a score of 40.0, then we'll get to the rocky desert, and then the final level uh, will happen when you reach a score of 50. There you go. It's quite a short game, this, so I better talk quickly. Um, so this was made by the developers Micro Mega, and there's no programming credit given in the game or in the instructions for a, a particular coder, but Micro Mega made two other games uh, for Amsoft, them being Codename Matt and Haunted Hedges, and no other games generally for the Amstrad. Uh, but for both games, a credit was given to a chap called Derek Brewster. So one would assume Brax Bluff is also Derek, if so, Derek went on to make Codename Matt 2, The Curse of Sherwood, which is quite popular, uh, Conquest, Mission Jupiter, I think that's for Codemasters, and Kenny Dalglish, Soccer Manager. But if it's not Derek, then it's likely to be the ZX Spectrum coders porting this, which was Tony Poulter and CB Fred. What's interesting to me, guys, if you look in the top right corner there, you can actually save your game and progress to memory. It says A equals save to memory, S is save, K load from memory, and L load. Nice. Also, weirdly, in the top left there, you can see what controls I'm pressing as well on the joystick. Pressing the fire button there, left and right and stuff. So you can follow what I'm doing there as well. Um, let's talk about these um, the original version of the ZX Spectrum. I mean, there's hardly any differences between this and the original Specky version. There are some slightly different sound effects in places. Um, the aliens don't flicker like they're doing here. Um, however, they have a nasty black square outline behind them um, on the Specky version. So both them, both versions, the aliens don't look particularly good. Um, also, um, this Specky has some additional ending graphics of a picture of yourself, uh, which is missing on the CPC version, but it's hardly a deal breaker. You're not really missing out much there. Um, this was reviewed uh, in the very first issue of Amstrad Action Magazine in October of 1985. They weren't impressed by the graphics, saying they look uh, they look like what happens when other micros crash, and uh, thought that the sound was terrible and the game overall was a little bit old fashioned. Hmm. And they gave the graphics 50%, Sonics 22%, Grab Factor 52%, Staying Power 51%, and an overall AA rating of 55%. Hmm. I think that's maybe a little bit harsh when you compare this to other Amsoft titles. I mean, as you've seen so far, guys, this tries to reach more higher than many of the other Amsoft games. And there's obviously some uh, some care and attention put into this, despite the bizarrely undetailed graphics. It seems like the graphics are a hangover of the specky ones, where most of them seem to be randomly generated to save on a m uh, sorry to save on memory. And yeah, there are some annoying sound effects in places, um, especially the home in beacon noises, which will probably drive people mad on the last level, which we're coming up to very shortly. And, well, you know, the flickery sprites of the aliens is a little bit disappointing. And uh, not exactly imaginative uh, sprites there either. Um, but um, So, yeah, it's not particularly pleasing on the eyes and ears at times, this game. But strangely, I'm kind of impressed by the atmosphere and the alien world it creates. Now, this is where the sound gets really annoying on this level. So, right, the final level. The last mission is the Acid Sea, which is the uh, toughest 
um, because it can be difficult avoiding the rocks and you can't control your speed. You're at the top speed of six now. Um, like level two, uh, where we were on foot, we need to follow a beacon emitting beeping noises. Higher the pitch, the more on track we are. Um, now this is a long mission actually, um, but essentially you need to hit a score of 70.0 and you've done it. However, stray from the beacon too much and you start losing score. So keep an eye on my score in the bottom left corner as well there, guys. So um, as for my score overall for the game, oh, that was a tough, that was very, very close. Um, as for my score, I think I'm going to give this... I, uh, Taking into account it's very, very early days of programming on the Amstrad. It's an Amsoft game, and Miles better than most of them. Hmm. I think I'm going to give this a 7 out of 10. It just sneaks in. Maybe it would have had like 69% or something from me or something, you know. Um, quite an interesting little game, actually, and it's quite fun for a little short blast. It might not hold your attention in, in the long term. Indeed, we're very, very nearly completed the game already. And then the game will just loop and get, uh, apparently will get harder. But then I've given the second second loop through a playthrough. It doesn't seem to get any more difficult. So um, not sure on that. So very little replay value, but kind of, kind, of, kind of impressed me. I don't know what you guys think to this. So let me know in the comments below. <laughs> But I thought this was kind of cool for an Amsoft game, because let's face it, most of the Amsoft games were utter turd. And um, despite the sort of rough graphics, which appear to be sort of almost randomly generated, although after repeated playthroughs of this level, the rocks do seem to spawn in the same places. So not sure, not sure on that, guys. I think it's just done to save memory and fit in as many levels as possible. Um. I was going to read out the full story from the manual, but I don't think I've got time now. I don't think you're really missing much, but um, but you got the gist of the story. And as you can see, the three crew members are still alive with their vital signs on the right there. And we're very, very, neat, re very nearly reached the end there because the score's on 68. Got to hit 70. And yes, we've done it there. So it should appear any second. And we've crossed the Acid Sea and reached our base ship with all three crew members alive and that guy that guys is the end of the game and we get a hundred percent as all the crew survived and apparently you should continue now with increased difficulty and we have a score of a hundred but very cool uh, so there you go guys i'm going to give that a, perhaps a generous generous seven out of ten what do you think this game uh, should score guys what do you generally think to it let me know in the comments below uh but that was brax bluff from amsoft in 1985 so thank you very much for watching guys and goodbye so thanks for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, please click a like below, leave a comment, and also subscribe if you haven't already. And over that way, there's another video for you to check out. Zypho, out.